wonderful and matchless name of Jesus Christ on the 10th of January 2021. It's a good thing again to be in the house of God to bring you a message from the Word of God that is holy and that is inspired. The Bible tells us that God has highly exalted and given this Jesus a name which is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things on the earth, and of things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And so we bless God that we can preach the name of Jesus despite what is going on all around this world. The message of today is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter number 11. Matthew, chapter number 11, beginning from verse number 1 to verse number 6. These are the words penned in the book of Matthew, chapter number 11, beginning from verse number 1 to verse number 6. The Bible said, And it came to pass... When Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, and he said unto them, Are thou he that should come, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go, and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. The Bible tells us here, about a man, a prophet, by the name of John the Baptist. He sent two of his disciples, and he asked Jesus whether he was the Christ, the anointed one, or the Messiah, or should we look for another? And Jesus sent a message back to John through his disciples and said, Go and show John, tell John the things that you have seen, and the things that you have heard, that the blind receive their sight, that the lame walk again, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. The Bible tells us about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus. And the Bible tells us he was ordained by God to prepare the way of the Lord. And the Bible not only said he was ordained, God didn't um, only choose him to prepare the way of the Lord. The Bible tells us this is the same John that we read about, that he stood up and he preached the repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And the Bible tells us many came to listen to his preaching. And many were convicted, many were convinced by his preaching. And the Bible said, and he baptized many of them for the remission of their sin, according to the scripture. But look at what happened. This Bible said, while he was baptizing the people, Jesus Christ himself came. And John said, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Not only that, God manifested toward John that this is the Christ that should be, be, should be um, becoming, the one that the scripture has spent about, that this is the one that should come. And the scripture said, God manifested that power through the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus. Not only that, John the Baptist heard the voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Now these are all the manifestation that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the one to come. And when we read a couple verses again, then we see that John not, is now in prison. Why is he in prison? The Bible tells us he said to 
Herod the king, that it is not lawful for you to take unto wife your, your, brother, um, your brother's wife. And he was thrown into prison for standing up and speaking against such a terrible sin. And then we read now that John the Baptist asks a question like this. Here's a man that heard, heard the voice, voice of God. He heard the word spoken to him from heaven. He saw the dove ascending, the Holy Spirit of God ascending upon Jesus. He saw it all. He even himself confessed that Jesus is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And now we see suddenly a course in a change of direction in the life of John the Baptist. He had what we call a little doubt. We see here that had he not doubted Jesus for who he was, then he would have not asked such a question. He was offended because probably of what he hear and what he have, um, people tell him about Jesus. And because of that, it casts doubt in his heart. So we see, first of all, that John the Baptist had doubts in his heart toward Jesus, who he is and what he is. And how can you have doubts in your life this morning? When you, what you expect is not going the way or coming the way you expect it to be. So that's the first reason why we can have doubt. I personally believe the Bible doesn't give us the reason why he asked such a question, but what the Bible does tell us that he was offended. Not only that, what was the reason? We see when John was in prison, Jesus didn't visit him probably, and he was probably a little discouraged. When he was um, there in prison, Jesus didn't find out about him, and probably that caused doubts and discouragement in his heart. But not only that, it shouldn't have never been like that. Here is the manifestation of God toward John in the beginning. Still we see that John the Baptist had doubts in his heart. And the Bible tells us he had great expectation from Jesus. And since it didn't go his way that he thought it would go, he had doubts concerning Jesus. And there are many people like that. They expect so much thing from God. They expect God to deliver them. They expect God to heal them. They expect God to provide for them abundantly according to when they want God to do it. And when it doesn't go their ways, they have doubts. And look at what happened. The Bible tells us in the book of James, chapter number 1. Let us read from the book of John and James, chapter number 1. And verse number, beginning from verse number 5 to verse number 8. James chapter number 1 and verse number 5 to verse number 8. The Bible tells us here clearly that when you have doubts in your heart, look here, if any man of any, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that waver it is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So we see that John the Baptist came to part in his life where he doubted Jesus. This is a, a man that was on fire for God. But look at the flesh. The flesh cannot always obtain and contain the things of God. So we see the, the first sign in John the Baptist's life. Now, this had, thing to do, had nothing to do with losing his salvation. It just had to do with, an, with a doubting issue. Just like um, one of the disciples doubted Jesus. And that should not um, be. Thomas doubted Jesus. And so it is with John the Baptist. John the Baptist doubted Jesus. He, he, he couldn't imagine that Jesus Christ would have done such and such a work. He probably expected Jesus to come, uh, establish his kingdom, liberate the ch children of Israel, and be king in the world. That is how he thought it was going to go. But it didn't go his way, so he was a little discouraged, and he had doubts concerning who Jesus Christ is. But Jesus sent the message and said, Listen, go and tell John the things that you have heard and see. The blind can see again, the lame walk again, the lepers are cleansed. You see, in those days, there was no doctors. 
And Jesus Christ just speak the words, and people could see again. He just speak the words, and people were uh, alive again that were dead. He just speak the words, and the lepers were cleansed. No medicine was there, nothing whatsoever. He just spoke the word, and it came into existence, and the miracle happened. So he said to the disciples of John, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. So that's the first thing I want you to see in this portion of Scripture. John the Baptist doubted Jesus at a certain part in his life. And we all came, will come to a point sometime in life, not everybody, but most people come to a point in their life where they have been serving God and they are in a prison. Just like John was in a prison, a prison of finance, a prison of discouragement, a prison of marriage problem, a prison of sicknesses, whatever it may be that can be a prison for you. And you come to such a part in life where you begin to be like John, the Baptist, and say, are he truly Jesus, or should we look for another one? We all come to that point sometime in our life. When we are in sickness, in pain, in agony, in distress, we come to such a point in our life. But it should never be like that. And always be motivated, always be encouraged by what Jesus Christ did. The second thing I want you to see also in this portion of Scripture. You see, John didn't fully understand God. You see, John was accustomed of um, doing his work in such a way. But now Jesus Christ came. Jesus Christ didn't do it according to John the Baptist's um, idea. Jesus did it differently. And he couldn't understand what was going on. You see, the world cannot understand how Jesus Christ worked and how God's work. Let me give you an example. When Jesus Christ was on the face of the earth, he was more concerned about setting people free from the bondage that they were in. That is what he, was his main course. That was his main core in everything that he did. He, the, Jesus himself said that the Son of Man came to seek and to save those which are lost. That is what we see in the scripture. John couldn't understand Jesus. And there are many people that doesn't understand Jesus. And that's why they ask question, is he really the Christ or should we look for another? And we see here from the scripture that John didn't fully understand Jesus. He thought that Jesus Christ will come and just take over the kingdom. Remember in Matthew that they wanted to take Jesus forcefully and make him king and Jesus didn't want that. The Bible tells us Jesus slipped through the crowd and multitude and he went away. You see, if Jesus Christ cannot be king in your life in a personal way, then even if he's king of the world and he's not king in your life, then it doesn't make no sense. And so we see in the scripture that John the Baptist didn't fully understand God. You see, God was more concerned about the spiritual than, uh, than about the physical. You see, we focus upon the physical we don't want to be in pain. We don't want to be in sorrow. We don't want to be in this and that and that. But God is focusing upon the spiritualness of the human, human race. And so we see from the scripture that the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither are his ways our ways. As the heaven is above the earth, so are his thoughts, the Bible said. So, you cannot fully understand God. Let God be God and let every man be a liar, the Bible said. So John didn't fully understand God. And there are many people that don't fully understand God. And that's why we ask so many questions. No people ask the question, well, when Jesus was on the face of the earth, why didn't he condemn slavery? When Jesus Christ was not there to um, condemn slavery, he didn't want it to be like that. But he was most concerned about setting people free in their mind and in their thoughts. Now, you can be set free from being a slave, but you still go after sin and sinful thoughts. Then what sense does it make? What effort does it make to do so much thing and still that person is spiritually not set free? So we see that Jesus was concerned about setting people free spiritually. And if their mind and their body and everything is set free, then you will have more effectiveness 
than for you to be just king and people don't want to serve you, people don't want to hear anything from you, people don't love you. You see, Jesus Christ wanted the people them to love him, love his Father in heaven. And that is what he came to do, but people couldn't understand that. So we see the second thing that John didn't fully understand God. And there are many people today that have turned their back away from God because you know why? They don't fully understand God. And that should not be it. So we see that John, the Baptist, was, he didn't fully understand God. And because of that, caused him to question God. When you don't fully understand God, it will cause you to question God, whether he is God or whether he's not God. And that should not be it. The third thing I want us to see, and I will close this message for this Sunday morning, is the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter number 11 and verse number 2. He said, And when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. Now, this is what I want you to see. The works of Jesus didn't impress John the Baptist. Isn't that sad? Everything that Jesus Christ did didn't impress him. And there are many people like that today. What Jesus Christ has done, don't impress them. What more should Jesus Christ do to impress you? We see John the Baptist. All the things that Jesus Christ did, didn't impress him. And there are many people like that today. All the things that Jesus Christ do, didn't impress, don't impress them. Think about it. Jesus has caused the blind to see again. That don't impress people today. Just like John, it didn't impress him. So that's why he asks, why are thou the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, or should we look for another? The dumb speak again. That didn't impress John. What was John looking for? If all those things that Jesus Christ did didn't impress him, then what will impress him? Even if Jesus Christ were to come today and take away all the evil people from the world, kill out all of them, and take away all the corrupt politicians, that will not impress people. Because you know why? The mind and the heart is not fixed fully on God. So we see here that the works of Jesus didn't impress John the Baptist. And we see that Jesus Christ gave his life as a ransom, the Bible said, for many. He died, the Bible tells us, he was nailed on a wooden cross. The Bible tells us he was, you know, um, he was mocked at, he was spit upon, and still that they will impress the world today. What more? should Jesus Christ do to impress you? If he has done so many things and that don't impress you, what more should he do? What more should he do? The human mind is messed up. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus that the children of Israel were in bondage for 400 years. And God sent Moses, his servant. And when Moses stood in front of Pharaoh, Pharaoh was not impressed by Moses. You study the scripture. Moses was 80 years and his brother was 85 years. They were over the 80s. They don't have an army. They don't have servants with them. They just show up in the presence of Pharaoh and they said, God said, you need to let my people Israel go. And you know what Pharaoh laughed at them? Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? I know not the Lord, neither will I hearken unto his voice. Isn't that sad? Then the Bible tells us that didn't impress Pharaoh. The Bible said that Mo Moses threw down his um, staff. It became a serpent. And Pharaoh's magician did that. It didn't impress Pharaoh. Then the Bible tells us Moses did miracle upon miracle. That didn't impress Pharaoh until the magician couldn't do that miracle anymore. Then is when he began to change his thoughts. And he began to think about letting the people of Israel go. But to show you this morning, sometimes, no matter what God do for the human being, still it is not enough. Still it is not enough. 
still it is not enough. You eat every day, you still curse God. You wake up every day, people still curse God. You have people being um, set free from their bondage, people still condemn God. Isn't that what is going on today in this world? We see in the scripture that John the Baptist, he, the works of Jesus didn't impress him. He didn't make no impression upon him. And sometimes we have to leave that kind of mentality. When we think of what God has done through his son Jesus Christ and what he's capable of doing, then, beloved, you need to trust him. Now, if you don't believe what he has done, how do you expect deliverance in the future? It cannot. It will never work. So we see in the scripture that John the Baptist, the works of Jesus didn't impress him. And so Jesus Christ wanted John the Baptist to understand that, listen, this is what I came for. This is my mission. You see, we want, he, he expects something totally different from Jesus. We should not be it. And so we see in the scripture that the Bible tells us that John the Baptist was offended. And there are many people today that are offended because what Jesus has done, don't impress them. And that's why we have so many falling away today. Now, John the Baptist didn't fall away. God had greater plan for John the Baptist. His mission, he, he, had the, he was the one with the shortest um, ministry upon planet or probably. He, had, he preached for a couple months only and he was thrown into prison and then they beheaded him. But he cannot see the great picture of what God is doing through Jesus Christ. And there are many people today, the things of Jesus don't impress them. No matter what Jesus has done, it don't impress them. And we should not have those kinds of ideas. Now, 2021, we are in it. What more should Jesus Christ do for you to believe him? What more should he do? He already died for your sins. He redeemed you. He raised again from the grave, the Bible said. Now he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. Now what more do you expect from him, beloved? You that are watching and listening at this message for today. You need to be encouraged. Don't be like John the Baptist. And that's why Jesus Christ said that John the Baptist, he's a, he's a man born of a woman, the Bible said. And among them that are born of woman, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, Jesus Christ said. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Jesus Christ said, he that is humble enough to accept him, to trust him, is greater than John the Baptist. And beloved, what more does Jesus Christ need to do to impress you? I try to impress my wife many times. Huh? And she's not always impressed at what I do. What more should I do? Even if I were to give, lay down my life, that doesn't move the human being. But Jesus has done more than that. What more do you expect? Just humble yourself and accept the truth that he's capable of doing what he said he's going to do, and you will see the miracle. And so we see that John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, do you realize that Jesus didn't go and said, all right, John the Baptist, visit him and said, all right, John the Baptist, let me put some sense in you. No, if you don't believe the works of Jesus, that what more should I do to impress you? It doesn't make no sense. Even if I were to go, if Jesus were to go in the prison and visit it, John the Baptist, that would have probably not moved John the Baptist. And there are many people like that. People want Jesus to come down and show his presence before they can believe. Beloved, if he has done so many things already, you don't believe. Even if he were to come down in person, you still will have your doubts and you will still have your way of thinking. My beloved, 2021, what do you expect from Jesus? If you don't believe what he did in the past, then you will not believe, even if he were to come down from heaven right now. And so I want to encourage you. What do you expect from Jesus? What more should he do? He already did everything that should be done. Trust him this year, 2021. Things might not always go your way. You want it, it to go, but you trust him. And he will see you through. God bless you. Thank you for watching. 
and listening at his message on the 10th of January 2021.